What is up, family? It's your boy D coming right back at you with another one. Right now, we're back in the lab, and T line dimensions are on the menu. What is up, family? We right back here at it, and it is back with the transmission line designs. This video here is going to be all about the dimensions. Previously in videos, you guys seen that I did talk about the three concepts that I had uh, going into this project. Right here, you have the classical design. You have the fourth order concept that I had. And you also had the isobaric uh, setup configuration that I had and just for a correction uh, shout out to the guy and I forget your name maybe I, I need to be learning you guys name you guys give some good input and somebody did correct me on this configuration right here this is not an ideal uh, isobaric configuration of course isobaric meaning that actually means that uh, the subwoofers actually have to share a space. I do have a video on that, but I thought this looked pretty cool, but I did misname it. And so shout out to you, to the guy that actually point, uh, called me out on that one. It was a, a necessary correction. I don't want to like, uh, mislead anyone. So I really do appreciate that. And just mentioning these comments in the uh, comment sections below you guys are very very intelligent with some of the come uh come to some of the comments and the questions that you have and some of the tips that you give and based on those tips and based on those concepts uh that you guys share in the comment sections below i actually made up my mind and decided to go with just a classical bill for now but don't you know just don't forget that this one here is really something that I want to get off into. Um, a couple people did mention the fourth order concept, and some people was uh, more people were I believe favored it than 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 were against it. So I think that I am going to go with this. I do think that uh, this seal section right here will do a little bit of good for the uh, transmission de design. Whether or not it'll have a greater output or give it best SQ, I have no idea. But for right now, I'm just gonna go for what I know and just go with the classical T-line build, okay? So, enough of that. If you guys remember in the previous videos, in one of the previous videos, I did mention that this build is gonna be for a uh, Dayton Audio Reference 8-inch woofer. These are the specs for anyone who is interested in doing the same. But as of right now, we're gonna go to the second whiteboard, and this is where the formula for the quarter wave uh, design is gonna come from. And like I said, this is a T-line enclosure. This is gonna be based on the quarter wave formula. And is if you guys are wondering exactly what the uh, what the quarter wave formula uh, is or what exactly it does, like I said, I'm gonna try to keep this simple. I don't like to like throw a lot of formulas at you guys, but when you're building something like a transmission line, you're gonna have to know some uh, some formulas. You can't run away from the math. You're gonna have to crunch some numbers, and you're gonna have to kind of understand some concepts behind it. So the quarter wave formula, what does it do? This is one of the biggest pros for it. It gives you about half an octave or eight hertz below tuning frequency to about double the tuning frequency itself. That's just pretty much what one of the biggest perks of it is. An example of that would be if you tuned it to roughly 30 hertz, a response would be around 20 to 60 hertz. And as you guys can, can tell just by that number, that's a broad frequency range that you can cover with just one enclosure and one driver. So that's why the T-line is very, very sought out there for guys who are trying to get that that uh, that broad range, of freq broad range of frequency response, especially when you're talking about hitting the lows. Because anything below 20 hertz, for the majority of people, you can't even hear that. It's more felt than heard, which is also a excellent thing when you're, when you're doing a home theater system. Moving on. Some of the most important parameters or some of the uh, the important parameters that you're going to need for 
uh, some uh, for, for building this enclosure is what we're going to be stepping through next. Coming up as number one is going to be the FS rating of whatever enclo uh, whatever uh, driver that you're going to be using. In my case, it's going to be 29.6 hertz. You're also going to need the SD measurement, which is cone area. And it's going to be in square inches, and in, in my case, it's going to be 33 square inches. You're also going to have to know the mounting depth. That is very important when trying to fit the driver in. As you guys seen in the previous video, I kind of ran into some issues with mounting depth, but I, I was able to kind of like make an adjustment for that. Um, in my case, my mounting depth is going to be around five inches. You're also going to need mountain height. The mountain height is a bit different from the mountain depth. The mountain depth is pretty much how far the the actual the driver actually goes inside of the box. The uh, mountain height, of course, is going to be from the uh, the top from 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 one point. It's pretty much the diameter of the driver uh, on the outside, not not the cone of the driver, but the driver itself, the whole housing of the driver itself. You're also going to need uh, to know the port length, or you're going to have to actually calculate port length, and it's going to be represented in the formula as PL, and this is also going to be in inches. Port width is also very, very important because, of course, with port, uh, port width and port height is something that you're actually going to need to actually get the port area, and port area is going to be represented by the acronym PA within the formula, and it's also going to be in square inches. Speed of sound, you're going to have to know the speed of sound in order to do these calculations. You're going to see that and understand that, uh, why that is in just a moment. All right, so we're moving forward with the uh, port length calculations. This is all about the port length. You're going to have to know the speed of sound, which is represented in this formula by SOS. You're also going to have to take the FS, and you're going to have to uh, uh, divide the speed of sound by the FS rating of the speaker. And what, what this is going to give you is X. And X, in this case, is going to be used later on in the formula. So once I ran that piece, I ended up with 38.18. If you move down here to the second piece, you take that finding, which is X, and you divide that by 4. Why are you dividing that by 4? Because this is based on a quarter wave length or quarter wave for, uh, formula, and anything dealing with quarters is cut into four pieces. So we're taking one of those fours, and that's our result is going to be 9.54 uh, feet, uh, feet. And of course, I, I want to convert this back to inches, so I'm going to divide, I'm going to, I'm going to multiply that finding this number by 12, and this is going to give me my uh my port length, like I said, is represented by PL here in the formula. So once I do that piece, once I do that math right here, I'm going to end up with 114 inches, and that's going to be my overall point length. It's going to be 114 inches. So next, we're going to uh, have to calculate port area. And to calculate port area, you're going to pretty much just, the port area itself is going to have to be equal to the SD rating of the speaker. And as you guys know, my SD rating was actually 33 square inches, okay? And remember that port area is also going to be in square inches. So how do you get that? You take the height times the width, and that's going to, and it needs to be equal to the SD rating of the speaker, which is 33 square inches. So in short, you can take any two numbers, okay? Any two, well, I can't say any two numbers. Any two numbers that equal to 33 in this case would be, uh, it would be ex exceptional. You know, you can, you, it could, acceptable. I'm going to say acceptable. Uh, because 33 square inches would be what the, uh, the SD rating of the, uh, the, 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 uh, the driver is. However, the reason why I had to plug in 7.5 and the reason why I had to plug in 4.5 uh, 4.25 in my case is because the uh, mounting parameters of my driver I could only this is the biggest that I this is the smallest actually that I can go remember my overall uh, mounting height is like eight point something inches a little bit over eight inches a little bit over eight eight and a quarter inches but I can actually fit the um, the um, 
the driver within a hole that is cut at 7.5 inches. Okay, so just, just keep that in mind. It can fit in a hole that is 7.5 inches. So you want to take that 7.5 inches and you're going to make that your height because the diameter of the cutout for the speaker to fit in is 7.5 inches. So I'm going to take that, that cutout and I'm going to say, what do I have? What number can I multiply by the cutout uh, uh, diameter of the uh, the woofer that I'm using and 4.25 actually gives me 33 square inches so my port area calculations is going to be 7.5 times 4.2 inches and that's going to give me 33 square inches and just keep in mind that your width of the transmission line has to stay consistent throughout the entire port length which is 114 inches and that's pretty much the numbers behind my design. I hope that I did not uh, lose anyone with this. I did not try to make this anything complicated. This is going to be the the uh, the uh, the design that I that I go with right here. This is what you guys are going to be seeing later on, and this is up to spec. This right here is what it's going to look like on the inside. And no, I'm not going to paint it red on the outside. <laughs> But for right now, uh, that is pretty much it on the T-Line and Dimensions. Hope you guys got something out of this. Uh, if you have any extra comments, as always, leave a, a comment in the section below. And I will try to get with you guys as soon as possible. Uh, and, I, as, and, and, and as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. For you guys who have not yet subscribed, please subscribe and click the notification bell if you want to receive more information and videos like this one right here. Don't forget to share with anyone who you feel as though they may be able to get something out of this. And until next time, it's your boy D, and I'm out.